Hey there, folks, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we learned how to use differentiation and integration as shortcuts for finding Taylor polynomials. In this video, I have one more shortcut for you that often gets overlooked, but it can be very helpful in the right situations. To introduce the shortcut, we're going to consider the following example. Here, we're looking for two Maclaurin polynomials. First of all, the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function x squared e to the x. And second of all, the 100th degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function x to the 96 e to the x. Okay, well, part B looks a little scary, so I'm going to start with part A. To find our fourth degree approximation, well, we can go by definition. According to our definition, P40 is given by this expression here. It's a polynomial whose coefficients are constructed using the derivatives of our function evaluated at zero and divided by the factorial numbers. So we're going to have to start by computing these derivatives. To find our first derivative, I think we're probably going to need the product rule, right? We're going to have to differentiate our first function, x squared, multiplied by e to the x, and then add x squared times the derivative of e to the x. That gives us 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Now that wasn't so bad, but remember we still have three more derivatives left to compute. And each one of those derivatives is going to require another application of the product rule. Ugh. Applying the product rule once is no big deal, but applying it four times, that's a pain in the butt. Nevertheless, I don't see another option. We don't currently have a shortcut for dealing with a function like this. So let's go ahead and compute these derivatives and build our Maclaurin polynomial. Now folks, I wouldn't make you sit through another three applications of the product rule. So I went ahead and computed these derivatives for us. It was painful, but these are the derivatives we're looking for. Of course, we have to evaluate these things at zero. If you plug in x equals 0, you should get values 0, 0, 2, 6, and 12. We can now use these values with the expression below to write down our fourth degree polynomial. Our polynomial P40 is given by 0 plus 0x plus 2x squared over 2 plus 6x cubed over 6 plus 12x to the 4 over 24 which simplifies to x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4 over 2. Notice that our polynomial has a common factor of x squared, and so too does our original function, right? There's an x squared out front. Is that a coincidence? No. If we factor out this x squared from the polynomial, we're going to get x squared times 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. Now, does this polynomial in the brackets look familiar? Hopefully it does, because in our first lesson on Taylor polynomial shortcuts, we actually showed that this polynomial is the second degree Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x. Ah, so it looks like our fourth degree approximation for f is made up of this x squared term that kind of got left alone times the second degree approximation for e to the x. It makes sense that it's a second degree approximation because when we multiply two quadratics together, we should get a polynomial of degree four. And that's what we were looking for here. Well, folks, this is pretty interesting. If we had known from the start that our fourth degree approximation for f was really just x squared times the second degree approximation for e to the x, well, we could have started by looking for that second degree approximation. And then we could simply multiply by x squared. That would have saved us all this mess involving the product rule. Luckily, it turns out that this connection holds generally when you're dealing with something that's made up of a positive integer power of x, so x squared, x cubed, whatever, times some other function. If you're looking for its Maclaurin polynomial, you can leave that power of x alone and just deal with the other function in your product. I'm going to state this connection for you in writing on the next slide, and then we're going to use it to solve part b. All right, here it is, folks. If you happen to know the nth order Maclaurin polynomial, say p of x for some function f, and you multiply that polynomial by x to the m, x to some positive power, well, you're going to get a Maclaurin polynomial for x to the m f of x. What's the degree of that polynomial? Well, if p had degree n, and you multiply by x to the m, those powers are going to add, and you're going to get a polynomial of degree m plus n. Let's see how we can apply this result to solve part b. 
Here, we're looking for the 100th degree Maclaurin polynomial for this function. According to our theorem, if we know the fourth degree polynomial for e to the x, well, we could multiply that polynomial by x to the 96. The 4 and the 96 will add as exponents, and that'll give us a polynomial of degree 100. That's going to be the polynomial we're looking for. So maybe I'll leave it as an exercise for you to show that the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x is this guy here. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial. When we multiply that thing by x to the 96 to give us the 100th degree Maclaurin polynomial for g, we're going to get x to the 96 plus x to the 97 plus x to the 98 over 2 plus x to the 99 over 6 plus x to the 100 over 24. And believe me, folks, when I say that this is a hell of a lot easier than computing 100 derivatives of our function, each of which involves a new application of the product rule.